Hi again then guys and welcome to of course another game review, a full game review in fact, not just a particular vehicle within the game, and of course this one's late technically, came out last year, I'm only just reviewing it now, Dirt Rally 2.0. Now not that long ago I reviewed V Rally 4. That game was fine, there was some stuff about it that I liked, some stuff that I didn't, but I didn't really ever play it again beyond doing that review. And that's something which I actually find as a reviewer happens fairly often. I'll play a game just to review it, and then not really play it that much after that. Sometimes that happens if a, a studio has asked me to do a review, sometimes it happens just with a game that I've felt like reviewing on a particular occasion. Sometimes though, I actually play the games as well and enjoy them. For me, this is one of those occasions. Now, one of the most important things, if not the most important thing that needs to be said about Dirt Rally 2.0, is this is a very 2000s era rally game. In the best ways, as far as I'm concerned. That is not a knock against it by any stretch. In fact, a lot of my favorite games come from the 2000s. Be it Forza 2, you know, Gran Turismo 4, Test Drive Unlimited 1 and 2, Project Gotham, etc., and even Rally games, my favourite ones were the WRC games on the PS2. This harkens back to that exact era, except newer physics, better graphics, of course a more, a more powerful console, and the advantage of stuff like additional content. Now, to speak on the point of additional content, this game does have it extensively. There's quite a bit of DLC, none of which I've purchased for full exposure, and none of which I plan to necessarily purchase either. Because for me, I don't feel it's entirely necessary, but I do hear good things about it. That is something to bear in mind. A second thing to bear in mind, especially if you are perhaps a younger gamer, maybe mid-teens, that kind of area, this is not a current style game. It's not about the multiplayer. There are some aspects of that, but it's much more focused on just you experiencing the game. And that is why I say it feels very much like a 2000s era game. And that's what I like the most about it. There's no gimmicky battle royale. There's no king of the hill. It's just you, a car, and a career mode. That to me is all I need from a rally game. Give me a few cars to choose from, some great locations, and a you know compelling career, as much as the career can be, and I'm pretty much set. That's all I realistically want from a rally game. And to be honest with you, that's why I don't play them that much anymore, because a lot of them got way too gimmicky. Even some of the previous Dirt games with all the fancy colors and the Jim Carner integration and all this Ken Block style stuff, I like Jim Carner as much as the next guy, but I get bored of it real fast. Point-to-point -point rally is what it's all about, and that's why I like the WRC games so much. Rally Evolved, for instance. Great cars, great locations, and for its time, fantastic physics. And that brings me to perhaps some of the things that I liked and disliked the most about this game. Now, first of all, let's be positive. Stuff that I did like. The locations look great. Now, some definitely do more than others. You'll see, for instance, in this video, some of the nighttime stuff, which is great, very claustrophobic. Some of the daytime stuff, especially when the sun is in your face and bouncing off the road, maybe with a wet surface, looks fantastic. The textures are great, I love it. Other times, such as the first location when you're in your Lancia, racing in Poland, not so much. It looks a little bit pasty, the colors are a little bit too happy and fun for my liking. I like my rally games to look a little bit more muddy and gritty and dirty, because that's kind of the point of rallying most of the time, but in this game I do predominantly like the look of the locations. On the other hand, however, the cars, not so much. And this is a curious thing that happens in a lot of rally games, and I actually respect them for it. Most racing games, look at Forza, Gran Turismo, perfect examples, they put all of the effort into the car. You'd expect that to be so. The car looks great, the track, not so much. Just look at, for instance, Gran Turismo 6. Drive a, a Nissan GTR Nismo on the Sierra time, you know, time trial track. Car looks great, track looks horrendous. Even Forza. Look at the spectators outside the track. They look like pieces of cardboard cut out. The car, though, looks great. That is what most games do. With a rally game, you cannot get away with that. Because unlike a circuit racing game, you are in the scenery. That's the whole point. So the trees, the mud, the grit, it has to look good. Even back on the PS2, up until today on the PS4. Thankfully, this game does that well. On the car side of things, 
not so much. As I said about the pasty colours, something which did bother me a little bit is that the light bloom is too high. The cars look kind of soft and almost like they're glowing some of the time, which again is what I meant by like it's a, a little bit too happy and colourful looking. Kind of reminded me of Forza Horizon 1, actually, in that way on the Xbox 360, which is great for Horizon, but not for a rally game. In terms of stuff which I didn't like as much, because there was a little bit of back and forth on that point, I don't like the cameras, and although to many players that might seem like an utterly irrelevant thing that you will never care about, for many of us we do care about that quite a lot. And for me what I'm talking about is not the quality of the camera, I'm not even talking about stuff like camera shake. I know some people love that, some people hate it. To be honest, it depends on the game for me. Sometimes it suits it, sometimes it doesn't. I think Forza did a great job of that in Forza 4 for instance, because you could have a close chase cam where it would get really blurry, but then when you do the far chase cam, the car looks stable. So you've got the option of both. In this game, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the angle of the camera and the way it follows the car. Because back in the day, it felt as if you were basically in God mode, watching this car go through an event and the camera was fixed to the vehicle, usually the front axle. So the camera kind of swings with the back end of the car. That looks great. It's why I used to love driving stuff like the Hyundai Accent and the Skoda Fabia, because you can really feel the shifting weight of the car and see it through corners. For some strange reason though, once the dirt games started to become the in thing, almost all of these modern games that aren't Simcade seem to have this weird camera mode which always reminds me of Need for Speed, where the car is almost like floating around in the frame and it feels to me like a small GoPro mounted on a, you know, a, a drone or something is chasing the car and that's how you're looking at it. It feels disconnected and although it's a small thing to many people, some of you might not even care at all, it bothers me quite a lot and I wish that that was different. Cockpit cam is fine, bonnet cam is fine and probably most people will only care about that. You know, you've got the multiple camera views whether or not you are or are not using a wheel. That's all well and good, that's great. I suspect that they assumed most people would be using those views, but for those of us who do like chase cam, it doesn't look great. What about physics? How do the cars feel? How do they react to the surfaces? Well, for the most part, it was good. I like the way the cars handle. There's actually something which those older PS2 games often didn't have, and they do certainly have in this game, especially in some of the older vehicles. They're cumbersome, and they should be. If you're driving an old rally car, it should not be as easy to drive as a 2005 WRC car, because they weren't as easy to drive. You hop in a, a front-wheel drive Lancia Fulvia, or a Stratos with rear-wheel drive, it should be challenging, because it's a totally different era. Jump in a Group B car like I am in the MG6R4, it should be challenging to drive. That was kind of the point. <laughs> That's why Group B isn't around anymore, because they were so dangerous. The game does a good job of putting that across. However, the major gripe, and this is a major gripe, and it's actually the thing that annoyed me the most about this game, is the brakes. And the reason why the brakes annoy me is because regardless of the car that I'm driving, from a classic Lancia, to a Group B MG, to an Escort Cosworth, even to a Rallycross Corsa, the brakes, every single time, are inconsistent. They work 95% of the time exactly as you'd want them to, slowing the car down, doing the job. But I noticed on multiple rally stages that the brakes would suddenly, just for no apparent reason, not stop you in time from going over the edge of a cliff. And it only happens on the corners where you need the brakes to work the most. Now, maybe that was a coincidence. But I put the same amount of braking power going at the same speeds on a normal corner and the car slows down just fine. Then you happen to be on a tight corner on the edge of a cliff, oh look, the brakes have locked up. Even though I've got ABS turned on. That kind of inconsistency, whether or not it's deliberate on the part of the developers or not, it annoys me. That's, it's as simple as that, it just annoys me. I do not like inconsistencies in games. Now, usually the way that you'd notice that in a game, Forza Horizon, for instance, three and four in particular, is rubber banding. It's very inconsistent. I've proven it beyond any doubt. You can, you know, drive perfectly and the AI will still catch up to you, then drive like a moron and they'll be the same distance behind because it's just completely 
arbitrary. They just make them catch up to you, and tons of games used to do that. Midnight Club, Need for Speed. This game doesn't do that, which is good. If you are faster than the AI, you will remain faster than the AI. That's great, because it actually makes it feel worthwhile. I applaud the game for that. However, the inconsistency comes more from those brakes and from the physics associated with the brakes rather than the AI. So it still lets me down there, but at least it's in a way that you can kind of uh, work around. Maybe, you know, be a little bit more cautious, break perhaps a little bit earlier than you think you realistically need to, but still, the inconsistency does bug me. However, that is my biggest gripe about the game. Now, of course, I haven't completed the game. As I said, I'm probably not going to bother with the DLC, so this is by no means a review of the entire career mode, but from what I've played so far, having like five or six different vehicles, racing in, I believe, probably something like seven or eight different locations, I like the game. I like a lot of things about it. I love the fact that it does have that unmistakable old school vibe, which Dirt initially kind of moved away from and now they've come back to with this. I like all of that. I respect it for it. It was fun. I enjoyed the experience. I still continue to play it every so often. And yeah, overall, my review for Dirt 2.0 is a positive one. To me, it's a game which certainly isn't perfect. My major gripes are stuff like the overbloom on colors the weirdly floaty camera, and the inconsistent brakes. Those three things you can probably live with. So overall, my review is positive. I think it's a good game, especially when it's free. <laughs> and I'd love to hear, of course, your thoughts down below. Did you get it day one? Do you still play it? Are you maybe considering getting it as I am? I mean, either way, if you are on PS Plus, get it. I mean, it's free. You've got nothing to lose. But overall, that's it for this review. Of course, I will see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.